presentation, which will take approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And after that, we will have time for some questions and a short discussion about all the topics presented here. In this presentation, I will briefly introduce CheckInvest as an institution and all the services that we provide to foreign clients, investors, uh, trade partners, and so on. I will briefly introduce the Czech Republic as an investment destination and tell you a little bit more about what makes it a great location for international investors. We will go through a little bit of FDI statistics and some of the busiest sectors or priority sectors, as we call them, which are the ones that we are mostly focused on and where we provide the most assistance and support. And at the end of the presentation, I will introduce the investment incentive schemes, which is available to all investors uh, when they decide to open a new production facility in the Czech Republic, a new development office or any other activity which is eligible. Czech Invest is a government agency which was established in 1992 and at that time its main goal was to attract as many investors as possible and create as many jobs as possible. It was of course shortly after the fall of communism, so the Czech economy was going through a lot of changes, uh, through a transformation let's say, so there were just those simple goals that I just mentioned, but as we've evolved and, and developed as a country, our main mission as Czech Invest has changed and we now focus uh, mostly on our so-called priority sectors, which I will introduce in more detail later, and we try to attract investments with uh, added value. And what we provide to those investors, uh, those international companies that are interested in the Czech Republic, uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that. So basically it's any kind of business intelligence, all sorts of data, statistics and any other information that the investors need in their decision making process, which could be any data about wages, about taxes, about local law and so on and so forth. We also provide consultancy on available financial support, mostly through the investment incentive scheme. Check Invest is the organization that accepts all applications of the investors. So we can also help you throughout the whole process. We can provide you with advice on how to fill out all the paperwork properly and so on. And together with you, we can also communicate with the government and with all the other institutions that are involved. We have an internal database of green fields and brown fields and production facilities and available offices. So we not only help the investors to select the most suitable region for the investment within the Czech Republic, but we also help them find the right facility or offices. And we can also connect them to partners in the private sector. So all sorts of real estate developers and experts. As part of our services, we also provide sourcing. Uh, so we can connect you to potential joint venture partners, supply partners in all sorts of uh, sectors and industries. And we also can provide you with a list of potential acquisition targets. And at least before COVID, one of the main uh, services that we provide, provided was tailor-made visits to the Czech Republic. So we would organize this for you. Uh, we would set up meetings with local companies, with other international investors, so they could share their experience with entering the Czech market. We would also take you to local R&D institutions, universities, and so on. We are hoping, I guess, as everyone else here, that as soon as this COVID crisis is over, we will be able to go back to that and, and organize some in-person missions to the Czech Republic. Uh, and hopefully this will happen rather sooner than later. And one of the last things I would like to mention right here is our aftercare services. So when an investor decides to open a new facility or a new entity in the Czech Republic, our assistance doesn't end there but they will be assigned a key account manager at our aftercare department who will always be in touch with them throughout their whole time in the Czech Republic and they can help them with any day-to-day -day business issues with uh, negotiations with the local and state governments and they also provide assistance with visa procedures and, and HR issues and anything that the investors might kind of struggle with or, or need help with uh, throughout their whole time in the country. As I mentioned in the previous slide, Check Invest provides any kind of information or advice or assistance to foreign investors in different kinds of topics, whether it's HR, whether it's taxes, whether it's uh, legal issues. However, in some cases, we of course may not have the expertise to answer all questions that the investors might have. And for this reason, we have a partner called the Association for Foreign Investment, AFI 
which basically gathers com companies in the private sector. They are HR agencies, real estate developers, legal advisors, accounting advisors, and so on. And as Czech Invest, we can approach them on your behalf and basically consult any kind of in-depth questions or issues that you might have and make sure that you always get a very professional answer or advice to any of your issues uh, so you can proceed with your assessment of the Czech Republic as, as a potential location. And in the case of real estate developers and legal advisors, you can also decide to work with them further so they can then help you to set up a legal entity. They can help you with hiring new employees. They can help you search for other facilities or land plots that weren't in the check checking us database. So this is always an option to get help from professionals in the private sector. And the first consultation through Check Invest is always for free, so you don't have to be worried about any un unwanted costs in the beginning. As I have mentioned before, in the following slides, I will present the Czech Republic as an investment destination and go through some of the reasons which make it a great location for foreign investors. I'm assuming that most of you, or maybe all of you, are to some extent familiar with the Czech Republic as a country, so I will not go through all the details. Uh, I would just like to mention that it's a, it's a rather small but very well-developed country in the heart of Europe. It's a country of about 10.5 million people, and we are a member of the European Union, of NATO, and many other international organizations and institutions. One of the reasons that make the Czech Republic a popular destination for international investors and trade is its location in the center of Europe, which makes it really easy to reach both the Western and Eastern markets through international airports, through highways, and through railway connections. And as you can see in the map, uh, the western parts of the Czech Republic directly border Germany. So those are quite popular with investors, uh, especially in the automotive sector, in the advanced engineering industry and so on, because it makes it really easy for them to deliver goods and parts and finished products to their partners in, in Germany. But as you can see in the map, we also directly border Poland and Austria and Slovakia. So you can easily reach other markets as well. And you can also bring uh, labor force from those markets as well. Since we are all part of the European Union, it's relatively easy to do that. So it's another pool of talent that you can take into consideration when you think about the Czech Republic as a location. Another reason why the Czech Republic is popular for international trade and investments is its predictability and stability, which is, for example, reflected in the development of the corporate income tax rate, which you can see in the slide. It has been stable for years and there are no immediate plans to, to change it. So as an investor or a trade partner, you always kind of know what to expect and you can rely on the environment to be stable and predictable. The stability and predictability that I mentioned in the previous slide are luckily also reflected by the three major credit rating agencies. So as you can see in this table, the Czech Republic is rated and seen as, uh, let's say, the least risky and most stable uh, country, especially in the region of Central and Eastern Europe. And this is another reason uh, why many international investors in different sectors and industries choose the country as their destination, as the destination for their new investment projects. The reasons or information that I've mentioned so far were, of course, mostly purely economical, but most of the investors that we work with at Czech, as Czech Invest, they don't only decide based on purely you know, economical data. So some of the other reasons or issues they take into consideration are, for example, safety. And luckily, the Czech Republic is the eighth safest country in the world based on the Global Peace Index, as you can see in this slide, which kind of gives you a peace of mind as an investor that you will be doing business in a very safe environment, that all your employees and their families will be living in a safe environment. And it also makes it a little easier to attract new foreign employees from other EU and non-EU countries uh, when they know that they're moving to a country with not only beautiful cities and historical sites, but also a very safe society and, and generally safe environment.
It is always a little difficult to talk about average wages because they obviously differ a lot depending on the specific industry. But I did want to include some numbers to give you an idea of what the costs of doing business are like in the Czech Republic. So in this slide, you can see gross monthly wages for one employee in all the regions of the Czech Republic in euros. And as you can see in the map, there are not any huge differences between the regions. So Prague stands out a little bit as the capital, the largest and the richest city, but otherwise all the regions are quite comparable. Uh, these are average wages for the whole economy and on the following slide I will also focus on specific industries. But in general, we are not uh, the cheapest destination anymore and, and we don't want to be. Uh, because, as I mentioned before, we want to attract high added value investments and investors who bring some kind of a, yeah, added value to the region that they select. But we are still more affordable than some of the other, let's say, Western countries, uh, especially in the Western parts of the European Union, but also the United States uh, and so on. As I mentioned in the previous slide, the, the average wages, of course, depend on specific industries. So, of course, if you will be doing business or trade in the uh, information communication sector or financial and insurance activities, uh, the numbers, the real numbers will be much higher than, than the ones that I mentioned uh, before, than the general averages. But then again, if you, if you are looking to do business in, let's say, construction or transportation and, and storage, uh, it will be below the general average. So this is just to give you some kind of a better idea of uh, what kind of costs you're looking at if you need to hire employees in the Czech Republic. So the last two topics that I will focus on will be the FDI statistics and investment incentives. So in the following slides, I will present some of the information and data that we have about the inflow of foreign direct investments to the Czech Republic. And then we will wrap it all up with investment incentives. So when we look at the structure of the incoming foreign direct investments in the Czech Republic, you can see it's a pretty diverse mix of different industries and sectors but two kind of stand out, and one of them is the financial and insurance activities, uh, and the other one is manufacturing. Both are rather broad categories, so there are a lot of companies that would fall into this, but in the following slides, I will give you a little more insight into what's included. Generally, there's a lot of automotive companies because of the history that Czech Republic has as one of the largest producers of new cars per capita in the European Union. Uh, but other companies would also be in advanced engineering, in medical devices and other sectors that all bring the added value that we are looking for. It is kind of easier to present this on a specific example. So in this slide, you can see the inflow of FDI from the United States to the Czech Republic. And as you can see, it's again a mix of sectors, but one of the busiest, or some of the busiest ones are software and IT services. Czech Republic is an a very popular destination for IT companies because there is a lot of talent, there is a lot of study programs at Czech universities which produce uh, many graduates with the right skills. And most of these companies also employ a very diverse teams of, of employees from all over the Europe, but also countries from outside the European Union. And as I mentioned before, we assist them with the visa procedures and, and so on and so forth. So it's relatively easy for them to build teams that can then serve the whole world from the Czech Republic. But also the automotive industry, which was mentioned here before a couple times as well, uh, it's kind of the, the backbone of the Czech Republic. There are many companies in this sector uh, developing either parts of new vehicles or vehicles themselves, and they often work with partners in, in Germany and other European markets. So here we also see a very steady inflow of foreign direct investments. And if you look at the table, you can see that besides those two, there's also lots of business services, there's uh, communications, pharmaceuticals. So these are all the sectors that we kind of see as the most progressive. And this is where we work with the investors to provide all the services and information and also financial support to help them feel at home and to help them uh, build their new production facilities or offices or, or new international teams within the Czech Republic.
I have mentioned the so-called priority sectors that Czech Invest uh, has a couple times before. So these include advanced industrial technologies, aerospace, AI and digital technologies, creative industries, including video games, for example, ecotech, health tech, including medical devices, uh, AI in healthcare, and so on, but also mobility, uh, which means usually green mobility, electric vehicles, and some of the future technologies in the sector, and space. And for each of these industries or domains, we have a team of experts that can work with you, and they can help you get connected with local R&D institutions, universities, other companies in the sector, uh, Czech suppliers, and so on. So if, if some of those sectors might be of interest to you, feel free to reach out and, and we can connect you with, the, with those specialists and kind of discuss what kind of opportunities uh, there are in the Czech Republic for you or for your company, or the company that you represent. I keep talking about attracting foreign direct investments, but this is, of course, uh, best illustrated by specific examples or case studies of companies that have already established their presence in the country. So I've selected three sectors just to give you some kind of an insight or, or idea of what kind of companies already are doing business in the country. So the first sector is uh, ICT, and as you can see, there are basically three main hubs. One of them would be Prague, the capital city, the largest city, and also the most popular ones, one for foreign direct investments. The second one is Brno in the eastern, south, southeastern part of the Czech Republic. It's the second largest city and also very, very popular with IT companies, especially in cybersecurity, but, but others as well. And the third one would be Ostrava. And these three cities have already attracted investors such as Microsoft, such as SAP, uh, such as IBM and Red Hat and many, many others. And all of them have been doing quite well. Their teams have been growing and most of them employ very diverse teams of employees from not only from the Czech Republic, but other European countries and also non-European countries. Another great example is the healthcare sector or pharmaceutical sector and thanks to the long history of uh, development of, of drugs and medical devices in the Czech Republic, including some HIV medications uh, and other uh, medications that are being used uh, around the globe, the Czech Republic has also managed to attract uh, large international investors in this sector and they are more, let's say, evenly spread out around the country. So, so it's not just Prague and Brno, but, but they are in other regions as well. And it's another example of, of a very busy sector, which we perceive as very uh, kind of the sector of the future, considering, you know, not only what's happening right now, but, but, but in general. So this is where we focus our support and also uh, the investment incentive scheme has been updated to reflect that and to help companies in this industry to apply for financial support. The third example is uh, advanced engineering. So this is, of course, not an exhaustive list of industries, but uh, just the third example. Uh, thanks to the long tradition of manufacturing and the basically industrial nature of the Czech Republic, uh, you can see that this is also one of the busiest sectors which has already attracted many, many investors from uh, all different countries and regions around the world. And we also see it as one of the most important sectors, uh, mostly because the economy is still transforming towards Industry 4.0 and then whatever comes after that, probably Industry 5.0. Uh, so we, we are trying to attract more companies in this sector to bring new technologies and new ideas and to transform the whole economy towards, let's say, robotics and 3D printing and additive manufacturing and, and other technologies. So the last topic of our presentation will be the investment incentives. It will be kind of a brief introduction into the whole scheme. But of course, if you would like to reach out and discuss this in more detail, I will, I will stick around. I will be here for the Q&A. And you can also visit me at the virtual booth of Check Invest uh, anytime during the day. And I will be more than happy to answer any questions or explain any, anything in more detail. So the three supported activities by the Czech uh, Investment Incentive Scheme are manufacturing industry, which would be the, let's say, traditional production. Then the second one is technology center, so any kind of research and development. 
And the third one is business support services, which also includes software development. So IT companies would also fall into this category and then high tech repair centers and data centers. So, so it's a mix of activities uh, that kind of fall into this broader category. There are always some general conditions that each investor needs to fulfill to be able to apply for the investment incentives, which generally include a minimum number of jobs and a minimum investment into long-term assets. But these differ by the specific type of investment or the industry or, or subcategory. So you don't really need to worry about the specific numbers right now. This will always be available on a website. This is more to give you an, a, a general overview of the whole scheme and a general understanding of what kind of conditions uh, you would need to fulfill to apply for the incentives and to receive the financial support should you decide to start doing business in the Czech Republic. You are probably wondering what the actual level of support is, so this slide will give you more details on that. And as you can see, for large enterprises, uh, this is uh, counted on a group level. So for large enterprises, the level of support would be 25% of all eligible costs. For medium-sized companies, it's 35%, and for small enterprises, it's 45%. Unfortunately, Prague is excluded from this scheme because it's basically too rich by European standards. So the GDP per capita in Prague is, is basically too high, so it cannot be included, but all other regions are included. And the eligible costs are either long-term assets, so your investments into long-term assets, which would usually be in the case of the manufacturing industry where you need to buy some new machinery, buildings, land, and so on. Or the eligible costs could be two years wage costs of employees uh, in the newly created positions. So this is basically kind of up to you to decide, but it's also decided by the sector in which you're doing business. Now that we have discussed the level of support, we can also focus on the forms of support. So when you fulfill the minimum or all the conditions, you apply, it's approved, uh, then you can either receive your support in the form of corporate income tax relief for up to 10 years, which applies to all the types of investments that I've mentioned before. And in some cases, you can also receive job creation grants, which uh, are up to approximately uh, 9.4 thousand uh, US dollars. And in other cases, it could also be training and retraining grants. So you need to you know, train your employees, you need to pay for some, uh, some specialized uh, training and courses and so on. So this could also be included in, in specific cases. And only in the case of production uh, of products for protection of life and health of citizens, this is something that was added during the COVID pandemic, you can also receive cash grants on capital investment of up to 10% of all eligible costs. So I know that there are, this seems like there are a lot of exceptions and, and, and changes, but it really is relatively simple. And we have an entire department uh, at Check Invest which specializes in this. They are the people that accept the application. So once uh, you decide to consider the Czech Republic, we can uh, give you more uh, detailed uh, presentation and discuss everything uh, you know, to, to the last specifics to make sure that you understand the scheme properly and that you know what, what you can apply for. Well, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention and for your patience. I hope this has been helpful and, and beneficial for you. And I believe that now we have time for some short Q&A. And then if anyone wants to get in touch later, uh, you can here you have my email address or you can reach me at the virtual booth of Check Invest. Uh, come over, ask any questions you have and we can discuss everything in more detail. And yeah, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of this event.